Welcome to the ultimate guide on how to spend four unforgettable days in New York City. From the dazzling lights of Times Square to the serene beauty of Central Park, we've got you covered with must-see landmarks and hidden gems that only locals know about. Stick around until the end for an insider tip that will make your trip truly special. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting travel itineraries and tips. Let's dive into the magic of NYC together. Best time to visit. New York City is a year-round destination, but the best times to visit are from April to June and September to early November. During these months, the weather is pleasant and the city is alive with events and festivals. Spring brings blooming flowers to Central Park, while fall offers stunning foliage and comfortable temperatures perfect for exploring the city on foot. City Airport Tips Most international visitors arrive at John F. Kennedy International Airport JFK, or Newark Liberty International Airport EWR. Both airports are well connected to Manhattan. From JFK, the air train and subway or the Long Island Railroad will get you to the city center for around 10 USD. From Newark, the air train and NJ Transit train to Penn Station cost approximately 15 USD. Where to stay in New York City? For first-time visitors, staying in Midtown Manhattan is ideal. It's close to major attractions like Times Square, Central Park, and Broadway. Hotels in this area range from 150 to 400 USD per night. For a more authentic experience, consider staying in neighborhoods like Greenwich Village or the Lower East Side where boutique hotels and charming B&Bs offer rates between 100 and 300 USD per night. How to get around the city New York City's public transportation system is extensive and efficient. The subway is the most convenient way to get around with a single ride costing $2.75 USD. Consider purchasing a 7-day unlimited metro card for 33 USD which allows unlimited travel on subways and buses. For short distances, walking and biking are excellent options with city bike rentals available for 12 USD per day. Day 1 – Exploring NYC Morning – Free NYC Walking Tour Start your NYC adventure on the right foot with a walking tour. Did I mention that there are free tours run by locals who volunteer their time? It's the perfect way to get to know the city, plus you'll be exploring with fellow travelers, which is a great way to make new friends to hang out with during your stay. The two best known companies offering free tours in New York City are Big Apple Greeters and Free Tours by Foot. Free Tours by Foot in particular has a wide range of daily scheduled tours. No matter when you arrive, you can join one of their fantastic tours. Some options from free tours by foot include exploring Chelsea and the High Line, Harlem, Brooklyn Bridge, Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, and Soho, Little Italy, and Chinatown. If you want to dive right into the heart of the city, their three-hour downtown Manhattan tour is a must. This tour covers Soho, Little Italy, the Financial District, and Chinatown. It's offered both in the morning and the afternoon. Keep in mind, though, that you'll need to pay for the metro fare, which is about $2.75 USD per ride. Also, you'll need to make a reservation for the tour as spots fill up quickly. Tours are available in English and Spanish. Insider tip. Wear comfortable walking shoes and bring a bottle of water. Also, consider giving a small tip to your guide at the end of the tour as a token of appreciation for their time and expertise. Metropolitan Museum of Art. No trip to NYC would be complete without visiting at least one of its world-renowned museums. The Metropolitan Museum of Art, known globally as the Met, is a must-see. It's one of the most famous and largest art museums in the world, and while you might not be able to explore every inch of its vast collection, your visit will be an unforgettable experience. If the Met isn't quite your thing, don't worry. NYC has plenty of other incredible museums to choose from. Consider visiting the Museum of Modern Art MoMA, the American Museum of Natural History, the New Museum, the Museum of the City of New York, or the Guggenheim. For many of these museums, you can purchase tickets online at a discounted rate compared to buying them at the door. This can save you some cash and help you skip the lines. Additionally, many NYC museums offer free tours at least one day a week. During these times, you can enter the museum for free. Make sure to check each museum's website before you go to find out when these free tours are and plan your visit accordingly. Insider Tip 
arrive early to the popular museums like Met and MoMA to beat the crowds. If you plan to visit multiple museums, consider getting a city pass which gives you discounted access to several top attractions and can save you both time and money. Afternoon, Picnic in Central Park. Central Park is THE park in New York City. This sprawling urban oasis sits right in the middle of Manhattan's Upper West and Upper East Sides covering a whopping 843 acres. Dating back to the mid-19th century, it was the first public park in the United States, making it a significant landmark in the country's outdoor landscape history. Before you head to the park, swing by a local sandwich shop or grocery store to pick up some food for a delightful picnic. If you have a blanket, bring it along, but sitting on the grass works perfectly too, especially during warmer seasons. Take some time to stroll around the park before and after your meal. The park is dotted with walking paths that make it easy to explore. While it can get quite busy, there are usually a few quiet spots where you can enjoy a moment of solitude. And don't forget to take in the stunning skyline views from various points in the park. It's a sight you won't want to miss. Insider Tip For a great sandwich, check out Sabar's on the Upper West Side. Their sandwiches are delicious and reasonably priced, usually around 10 to 15 USD. Also, consider visiting the park early in the morning or late in the afternoon to avoid the crowds and find the best picnic spots. Evening, Times Square. While Times Square might be considered a tourist trap by locals, it's definitely worth a visit during your four days in New York City. Plan your visit for the evening when it starts to get dark and you can see it light up in all its glory. This massive plaza is covered in billboards and moving pictures almost everywhere you look. It's an incredible sight that's uniquely New York. Plus, there are plenty of shopping opportunities here, so if you need to pick up any last-minute essentials for your trip, this is the place to do it. While you're at Times Square, be sure to stay aware of your surroundings. It's not that the area is unsafe, but because it attracts so many tourists, some scams can happen. Watch out for people dressed in character costumes who might charge you upwards of 20 USD for a single picture, and be cautious of anyone trying to sell you a blank CD. There are other tourist scams as well, but these are the most common. Just keep an eye on your belongings and enjoy the dazzling lights and bustling energy of Times Square. Dinner For a fantastic dinner near Times Square, head to Carmine's Italian Restaurant. This beloved spot is perfect for indulging in classic Italian cuisine. Order the chicken parmigiana, a crowd favorite which comes in generous family-style portions. Pair it with their famous garlic bread and a Caesar salad for a complete meal. Expect to spend around 30 to 40 USD per person. Insider tip. Make a reservation in advance as this popular restaurant fills up quickly. And don't forget to try their homemade tiramisu for dessert. It's the perfect way to end your night in Times Square. Day 2. Iconic landmarks and Broadway fun. Morning. Bagel Breakfast New York City is famous for its bagels, so today you're kicking things off with a unique and delicious bagel breakfast. You can find bagel shops claiming to be the best on almost every street corner, so choose wisely. Some of the top-rated spots include Absolute Bagels, Tell Bagels, Bose Bagels, Bagel Works, and Tompkins Square Bagels. Tompkins Square Bagels in particular is known for its wild flavors like rainbow-colored bagels. If you're looking for an Instagram-worthy breakfast, this is the place to be. With your delicious bagel in hand, which will likely cost around 5 to 10 USD depending on your choice of toppings, it's time to move on to the next exciting stop on your NYC itinerary. Insider Tip For the freshest bagels, try to visit these shops early in the morning. Bagel shops in NYC often have long lines, but the wait is worth it for a warm, fresh bagel. Pair it with a schmear of cream cheese or some lox for the full New York experience. Liberty Island Today is the day you've been waiting for. It's time to visit the iconic Statue of Liberty! While some people think a trip to see Lady Liberty is a quick stop, I recommend setting aside nearly a full day to truly experience everything this landmark has to offer. You'll need to take a ferry from Battery Park, which costs about 18 and a half USD for adults. The ferry ride itself is a treat, offering fantastic views of the New York City skyline. Once you arrive, you'll want to take your time exploring Liberty Island and even consider visiting the museum and climbing up to the pedestal for an incredible view. Insider Tip Arrive early to beat the crowds and catch the first ferry of the day. This way, you'll have more time to explore both Liberty Island and Ellis Island without feeling rushed. Don't forget to bring snacks and water, as the food options on the islands can be pricey. How to get to Liberty Island 
Liberty Island is only accessible by ferry, so you'll need to either book your own tickets or join a guided tour. Ferries depart from Battery Park in Manhattan or Liberty State Park in New Jersey. It's important to remember that Statue Cruises is the only authorized vendor for ferry tickets to Liberty Island. Avoid vendors selling tickets around Battery Park, as those won't get you access to Liberty Island or Ellis Island. The Statue of Liberty is one of the world's top tourist attractions, so it's essential to book your tickets well in advance. When you make your booking, you'll need to choose a specific starting time. Keep in mind that this time isn't departure time for the ferry, it's the time you can enter the security facility where you'll go through an airport-style security screening. After clearing security, you can head to the docks and board the next ferry. Ferries usually run every 20 to 30 minutes, but they can sometimes run behind schedule as the day goes on. That's why it's best to visit early in the morning to avoid the massive crowds and potential delays. Plus, the morning light offers fantastic photo opportunities. You can choose from three different ticket types, General Admission, Pedestal Reserve, or Crown Reserve. General Admission, 18 and a half USD. This ticket provides access to the grounds of Liberty Island, the Liberty Museum, the grounds of Ellis Island, and the Ellis Island National Museum of Immigration. Pedestal Reserve. In addition to everything included in the general admission ticket, this option lets you access the pedestal of the statue. Crown Reserve. This ticket includes access to both the pedestal and the crown of the statue, offering a unique and memorable experience. Insider Tip. Book the Crown Reserve tickets if you can. They offer an unparalleled view of the city and are totally worth the extra cost. Also, make sure to wear comfortable shoes as there are quite a few stairs to climb if you go for the Crown Reserve ticket. Afternoon, Ellis Island. Many people don't realize that their ferry ticket to the Statue of Liberty also includes access to Ellis Island. So, after soaking in the sights on Liberty Island, make sure to hop over to Ellis Island. It's packed with as much, if not more, history. In the early 19th century, Ellis Island was the busiest immigration inspection station in the United States. Approximately 12 million immigrants were processed here between 1892 and 1924. While you're there, check out the Wall of Honor. Located just outside the Great Hall at the Ellis Island National Museum of Immigration, you can look up the names of immigrants who've passed through here, which is a truly moving experience. Spend a couple hours at the museum, which documents the history of American immigration through fascinating photographs, heirlooms, and historic records. It's a wonderful way to connect with the past and understand the diverse roots of the American population. After visiting the museum, take a stroll in the park outside. It offers some of the best views of the NYC skyline, perfect for a photo op or just soaking in the scenery. Evening, Broadway. Your New York City adventure wouldn't be complete without seeing at least one Broadway play. End your day with a bang by catching a show. If you have your heart set on a top-rated production like Hamilton, be sure to book your tickets well in advance. For some of the less popular shows, you can often snag tickets on the day of the performance. Ticket prices vary widely. You can usually find tickets for shows like Some Like It Hot for around 50 USD, while top hits like Hamilton and Wicked can be closer to 150 USD or higher. So choose your Broadway show wisely. There are so many fantastic plays to choose from, so take some time to browse through the options and find one that excites you. Insider Tip For last minute tickets at a discount, check out the TKTS booth in Times Square. They offer same-day tickets to many Broadway shows at up to 50% off. Dinner For a delightful dinner near Broadway, head to Joe Allen Restaurant, a beloved theater district staple. This cozy spot is perfect for a pre- or post-show meal. Try their famous meatloaf served with mashed potatoes and green beans for about 28 USD. If you're in the mood for something lighter, their Caesar salad with grilled shrimp is also excellent. Don't miss their decadent chocolate pudding for dessert. Day 3, Exploring the Heart of NYC Morning, Brooklyn Bridge and Dumbo Today's the day to venture beyond Manhattan. Your first stop is Brooklyn, an absolute must-see if you're spending four days in NYC. Start with the iconic Brooklyn Bridge, one of the most Instagrammable spots in the city. Built in 1883, this historic bridge crosses the East River, offering stunning views in both directions. On one side, you'll get a great view of the NYC skyline, and on the other, a fantastic view of Brooklyn. The most popular photo spot is from Washington Street, so head there first to avoid the later crowds. The view from here is truly impeccable, so make sure to bring your camera. 
After capturing those perfect shots, take some time to explore the Dumbo neighborhood. I know what you're thinking, Dumbo? It stands for Down Under the Manhattan Bridge Overpass. This area is packed with great sightseeing opportunities. Wander around without a set plan and see what you stumble across. You'll find charming cobblestone streets, trendy boutiques, and fantastic eateries. Insider Tip For a unique perspective of the bridge and the skyline, visit the rooftop at Time Out Market, grab a bite to eat, and enjoy the view from above. Visit a Market Brooklyn is famous for its markets, so be sure to visit one if there's one open during your trip. One of the most popular spots is Brooklyn Flea, the largest flea market of its kind. Open on Saturdays and Sundays, it's a great place to stroll around, meet locals, and maybe even pick up a unique souvenir or two. Another must-visit market in Brooklyn is Smorgasbord, an incredible food market that's perfect if you're feeling hungry. Open on Saturdays, Smorgasbord is the largest open-air food market in the United States. You'll find an amazing array of delicious foods from various vendors, making it a foodie's paradise. While many vendors accept cards, it's always a good idea to have some cash on hand, just in case. Plus, using cash at street markets is usually the safest bet. 9-11 Museum While the 9-11 Memorial is free to visit, the museum requires an entrance ticket which you can buy on-site or book in advance. If you're visiting during peak tourist periods, booking in advance is strongly recommended. The museum provides detailed information about the history of the 9-11 attacks and the 1993 bombings. It's one of the most moving and informative museums you'll ever visit. Though the subject matter is heavy and heartbreaking, the museum is incredibly well curated and comprehensive. You'll learn not only about the tragic events of 9-11, but also the prior events leading up to it and the aftermath of the attacks. The museum displays an extensive collection of artifacts, pictures, videos, and personal stories. It's a lot to take in, but truly worthwhile. Even if you're not typically a museum person, you might find yourself spending around four hours inside. In addition to the core exhibitions, there are special exhibits such as the documentary on the hunt for bin Laden and the Canine Courage exhibit which honors the dogs that participated in the response to the attacks. Late Afternoon, One World Observatory One World Observatory is one of the most incredible viewpoints in NYC and a must visit on your four-day New York City itinerary. Located atop the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere, One World Observatory spans three levels filled with innovation and inspiration, and of course offers breathtaking 360-degree views. Be sure to book your tickets in advance. Since your ticket grants you admission for a specific time, aim to arrive 5 to 10 minutes before your slot. Once you arrive, hop on the high-speed Skypod elevator which will whisk you up to the 102nd floor in just 60 seconds. Plan to spend at least one to two hours at One World Observatory to fully appreciate the stunning views. Insider Tip Visit One World Observatory just before sunset. This way you can experience the cityscape in daylight, at sunset, and then see the twinkling lights of the city as night falls. It's a truly unforgettable experience. Evening, the High Line the High Line is a must-visit, super unique park in NYC. This park is a long, elevated walkway filled with brightly colored plant life, making it a beautiful escape from the city's hustle and bustle. The park stretches for about 1.5 miles, 2.5 kilometers, so you can spend around 30 to 45 minutes walking the entire length. No four-day New York City itinerary would be complete without a visit to this gem. What makes the High Line so special is its elevated viewpoints and its history as a repurposed train track. It was set to be demolished, but in the early 2000s, the Friends of the High Line held a competition to see how the area could be best repurposed for public use. The result is this fantastic urban park beloved by locals and tourists alike. The views from the High Line are spectacular, offering unique perspectives of the city. Just keep in mind that the park closes at 10 p.m., so make sure you give yourself enough time to fully enjoy it. Washington Square Park End your day with a visit to Washington Square Park, named after none other than George Washington. Covering nearly 10 acres, this lively park is located in Greenwich Village and has been a popular spot since it opened in 1871. It's especially beloved by NYU students, so you'll often find it buzzing with activity. The park is always bustling with life, making it a great spot for people watching and enjoying some fresh air. 
Since the 19th century, it has hosted many gatherings and city events, so you might even catch something interesting during your visit. Don't forget to check out the impressive statue of George Washington. Insider tip. Grab a coffee or snack from a nearby cafe and find a bench to relax on. The park's fountain area is a great spot to unwind and take in the vibrant atmosphere. Dinner. For a delightful dinner near Washington Square Park, visit Loring Place, a cozy and stylish spot known for its farm-to-table American cuisine. Start with the crispy zucchini fries, which are a hit with the locals. For the main course, try the wood-fired pizza, especially with spicy soppressata, which is a flavor explosion. A meal here will cost around 30 to 50 USD per person. Insider tip. Save some room for their seasonal desserts like the warm apple pie. Make sure to book a table in advance to avoid the evening rush and enjoy a stroll through the park before and after your meal for a perfect New York night. Day 4. Discovering NYC's Treasures Morning, St. Patrick's Cathedral On your last day in New York City, make sure to visit a few more must-see spots before heading home. Start your morning at St. Patrick's Cathedral, which opens bright and early at 7 a.m. This iconic Gothic cathedral is one of NYC's most stunning landmarks, featuring an elaborate interior that will leave you in awe. Be sure to admire the beautiful mosaic windows, they're truly breathtaking. And the best part, it's just a short walk from your next stop, Rockefeller Center. Insider Tip Arrive early to St. Patrick's Cathedral to enjoy a peaceful visit before the crowds arrive. Afterward, grab a coffee and a pastry from a nearby shop to enjoy on your walk to Rockefeller Center. Rockefeller Center. After taking in the beauty of St. Patrick's Cathedral, take a short three-minute walk over to Rockefeller Center. Situated in Rockefeller Plaza and named after John D. Rockefeller, this area spans 22 acres, 9 hectares, and is brimming with must-see attractions. From the rink to the top of the rock, coming up next on our list, and plenty of shops and restaurants, there's so much to explore. Take your time to wander around and soak in the vibrant atmosphere. After all, it's your last day in New York City, so make the most of it. Insider tip. Visit the Lego store in Rockefeller Center. It's a fun stop with impressive Lego displays and a great place to pick up a unique souvenir. Afternoon. Top of the Rock or Empire State Building. It's finally time to get one of New York City's best views from the top of the rock. While the Empire State Building is also fantastic for city views, many argue that the top of the rock offers even better vistas because you can see the Empire State Building from here. The building boasts 70 floors and three different observation decks. Though it opened in the 1930s, it wasn't branded as the top of the rock until 2005. From the top, you can see all the way to Central Park. Be sure to download Top of the Rock app, which gives you an in-depth look at your surroundings during your visit. Set aside 45 minutes to fully embrace this landmark and soak in the breathtaking views. Also remember to purchase your tickets well in advance since this is one of the city's most popular attractions. Trust me, your four days in New York itinerary wouldn't be complete without this incredible experience. If you only have time for one viewpoint today, I highly recommend choosing the Top of the Rock. Of course, if you have some extra time and want to check off another iconic observatory, you can also visit the Empire State Building. Whichever you choose, you won't be disappointed. That's a promise. Late Afternoon, Fifth Avenue Even if you're not planning to buy anything, a visit to Fifth Avenue is a must. This world-famous street is known for being one of the most expensive shopping destinations globally. It's also centrally located in Manhattan, close to Washington Square Park and Greenwich Village. While Fifth Avenue is known for its high-end stores, you'll also find some more affordable options like Gap, Abercrombie & Finch, and Best Buy. It's the perfect place for some window shopping and soaking in the vibrant atmosphere. Evening, Grand Central Terminal To cap off your four-day NYC adventure, you absolutely must visit Grand Central Terminal. Made famous by shows like Gossip Girl, this iconic landmark is both grandiose and elegant. Located in Midtown Manhattan, the interior is truly stunning. Though it can get quite busy, no matter when you visit, make sure to snap a photo. This spot is incredibly Instagrammable. Insider Tip Don't miss the Whispering Gallery near the Oyster Bar. Stand at the opposite corners and whisper, your friend will hear you perfectly on the other side. It's a fun and unique experience to try while you're there. New York Public Library Last but not least, make sure to visit the New York Public Library. It's completely free to enter, and exploring its various areas is a real treat. 
The library, which opened in the 19th century, houses over 50 million books and boasts an intricate historic interior. The building itself is a significant piece of history filled with charming rooms and nooks to discover. Take your time to soak in this final landmark of your NYC adventure. The New York Public Library is considered one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. Keep an eye out for the book train, a unique feature that transports books throughout the library. Insider tip. Don't miss the Rose Main Reading Room, a stunning place perfect for capturing that perfect Instagram shot. Plus, there are often free exhibitions showcasing rare books and manuscripts, so check the library's schedule to see what's on during your visit. Dinner. For a wonderful dinner near the New York Public Library, head to Bryant Park Grill. This elegant yet cozy spot offers a delightful dining experience right next to Bryant Park. I recommend trying their grilled Atlantic salmon, which is perfectly cooked and served with a delicious side of seasonal vegetables. Pair it with a glass of their house white wine for a complete meal. Expect to spend around 35 to 50 USD per person. Insider tip. If the weather is nice, ask for a seat on the rooftop terrace for a beautiful view of the park while you dine. Thanks for joining us on this whirlwind tour of New York City. We hope you found our tips and itinerary helpful for planning your own adventure in the Big Apple. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more travel guides and itineraries. And don't go just yet. Check out our Los Angeles video for another amazing city adventure. See you in the next video.